Creating a healthy work culture where team members feel psychologically safe to express themselves, share their thoughts and ideas, and collaborate effectively is essential for any organization's success. But achieving such a culture can be challenging, especially when team members have different personalities, communication styles, and expectations. In this episode, we will explore some practical tips and techniques for fostering a safe and inclusive work environment, even when facing a difficult situation or dealing with the reluctant team members. Okay. As a Scrum Master, I know that psychological safety is a crucial for success of a Scrum team. In my experience, increasing psychological safety is a key to promoting open and candid discussions. Recently, I came across a popular webinar discussing psychological safety, which sparked my interest. The speakers shared stories and insights from their experiences, highlighting the importance of psychological safety at the team and management levels. One of the speakers who was researching psychological safety defined it as the ability of an organization to handle candid feedback. Essentially, team members should feel comfortable providing critical feedback on the progress of their work without fear of retribution or punishment. However, there seems to be a misconception about uh, psychological safety being a warm comfort blanket that protects individuals from harsh feedback. In reality, it's about creating an environment where team members can openly provide feedback without personal attacks or retribution. Psychological safety is essential in creating a supportive environment where team members can openly discuss their thoughts and feelings without fear of being cast as an outsider. As a Scrum Master, I strive to foster this level of respect and trust with my team to ensure that we are building quality products that meet our definition of done. Now let's talk about creating and maintaining psychological safety in teams, okay? In the world of coaching and team building, psychological safety is an incredibly important concept. Creating an environment where team members feel safe to be vulnerable and open with each other is crucial for success. However, as someone who has been spent a lot of time working with teams, I found that it can be incredibly difficult to create and maintain psychological safety. And one of the biggest challenges is building a strong bond with a team. Without a level of inter-team cohesion, it is difficult for team members to trust each other enough to share personal feelings, approaches, and understandings. This bond needs to be built without impact the team's culture, which is a defining feature of any team. This culture leads to behaviors and values which can make it hard for some team members to trust and be critical of others. Another in interesting aspect of psychological safety is how easy it is to destroy it. A team may have, may, created, may have created the perfect environment where team members are highly critical of each other's work, but respectful and action-oriented in their approach. However, all it takes is one person to take things personally, and that psychological safety could be broken, right? This can lead to conflict, mistrust, and bad behaviors. I've seen this play out in my own experience, where a new team member joining an establishing team with a high level of psychological safety can lead to conflict and derailment in, if they do not fit in the team's culture. And it is Delicate balance and maintaining it requires constant effort and attention. I've realized that when someone is in a management position, behaves in a way that destroys psychological safety for the team, my immediate reaction isn't always helpful 
I used to fall into the trap of uh, taking off of the teams as a victim, management as a prosecutor, and myself as a rescuer. However, I've learned that it's important to be self-aware and manage my own feelings of unsafety before reacting. Sometimes the most powerful person in the company is also the most terrified and something in their past may have caused them to behave in a way that destroys psychological safety. This can create a toxic culture in the organization where critical feedback is discouraged and fear reigns. Coaches and scrum masters need to be aware of the impact of culture on the team's performance and work to create a culture of open communication and feedback. It's interesting how culture can become toxic when people start to cling to power and control. But there will also be leaders who encourage experimentation and create a safe space for everyone to share their thoughts and feelings. I've been thinking about how to encourage this type of culture and I would like to hear your thoughts. How do you create a safe space for yourself and your teammates? How do you encourage others to open up and share their ideas? Please put your thoughts in the comment section. And I think one way to start is by asking yourself how safe you feel with your team. Can you be yourself? Can you provide honest feedback? Can you share something personal with the team? Once you have an idea of where you stand, you can start to think about how to improve the culture. As a scrum master or a product owner, you can start by leading retrospectives and discussing behaviors that can make the team feel more open and safe. You can even create a description of the team's culture together. But remember, if no one is willing to speak up, that's a sign that something needs to change. When faced with a group that is hesitant to speak up during retrospectives, there are a few techniques that can be used to encourage participation. One approach is to use OG technique, you can Google it, which involves articulating what you noticed, such as pointing out that the group is exploring a question, but no one is speak up, speaking up. Another technique is to count slowly to 25 after asking a question, allowing time for introvert members to process their thoughts and feel more comfortable speaking. It's important to deal with any anxiety or discomfort with silence and allow the group space to share their thoughts and ideas. By creating a safe and encouraging environment, Surprising insights can emerge from those who may have been hesitant to speak up initially. Okay, now let's conclude this episode. We've explored the importance of building a safe and inclusive work culture that empowers team members to collaborate, innovate, and thrive. So whether you are a scrum master or product owner, a team leader, or a team member, these thoughts can help you navigate the complexities of group dynamics, build trust and rapport with others, and foster a culture of excellence and continuous learning. By embracing empathy, self-awareness, and diversity, and openness, we can create a worksp workplace where everyone feels valued, respected, and inspired to do their best work. Thank you for staying with me. Bye-bye.